Okay, y'all, in this segment we will be covering install. The first step in install is to boot into Windows. Uh, I'm sure this is distorted as all heck, but you're just going to have to live with that. Used to not have to do this, but since Octa you're going to be running some form of Windows 7, you have to do this from the Windows side now, and you actually cannot do it as nice as you could from the Linux side. If you have the Windows disk, you do not have to do this. I will cover that when we get to that point. This is also only important if you want to keep Windows. If you're going to be installing Linux on a, another hard drive, or you just gonna install Linux over the whole thing and wipe the Windows drive or any of that, this is an unneeded step. This is assuming you have one hard drive in your computer and you need to put all the operating systems on the one drive. And because Windows is only happy when Windows does it, here's what you do. You open a start menu and you type disk. D-I-S-K Delta Igloo Sarah Kelvin And the things that come up, there will be a create and format hard disk partitions. Go under there. You will get the disk management system. Go to your C drive. And if you can't figure out which drive's your C drive, look up here. It'll say C drive, simple, basic, NTFS, and somewhere in here it'll say it's capacity. Go to the partition down here, that's the same. Uh, and it also says right here, C drive. Right click on this partition. And the right click menu, sh click shrink drive volume. Depending on the size of your drive, this may take a few minutes. This one's a little small, 300 gigs, so it's not going to take that long. If you have something like a 2 terabyte drive, Windows will sit here and think a second. A little dialog will pop up where it goes, enter the amount of space to shrink in megabytes. By default, a number roughly half the size of the available space on the drive will be available. Which means, regrettably, and that is the maximum, you can shrink it. You cannot shrink it more. Which means if you got a 500 gig drive that's 250 gig free, it's only going to let you free up 125 gig of unpartitioned space. You could easily shrink that drive to 300, shrink that partition to 300 gig, and it would be fine. If you want to do that, you have to go through some extra steps. But in order to do that and still be able to boot into Windows, you need the Windows disk. Which, I, if you bought your computer off the shelf, you don't have. So, you're going to be stuck with this limit. Click shrink. It'll think about it. Depending on the size of your drive, it may take longer. Then it's like this is a largely empty drive, basically a fresh factory ISO installed of Linux, so I see me a Windows, so this isn't a problem. Now the Windows drive is 150.17 gigabytes and the unallocated space is 147.82. Task done. Take the Linux disk you burned earlier. I'm using the PC Linux OS 2010 beta, which you can get from PCLinuxOS.com. On the very front page of PCLinuxOS.com, there's a thing that says 2010 beta. 
download the ISO and burn it and follow the instructions for burning an ISO. I recommend you start with 2010. Do not download the old 2009 in the download section. Or maybe by the time you're watching this video, it will have downloaded. Now that you've put the disk in, restart the computer. Okay, now I made an assumption there that your computer is set to boot from the CD. If you bought it in a store, odds are it probably isn't. It's going to be different on every computer. In the BIO screen that comes up at start, there's going to be something that says enter Dell or F1 or F8 or F12 or some key to enter setup or BIOS setup or something like that. Do that. If somebody really needs a more detailed explanation on how to enable CD booting, I, I will make a video on that, but I really don't think I need to waste any film on that right now. And this menu that comes up, you have a couple of options. Now, if you're committed to installing, just do live CD. If you want to see how this thing's actually going to run on your system, and you have at least two gig of RAM, preferably four, select the option copy to RAM. And it'll copy the live CD ISO to your memory on your computer so it'll run more like it would from a hard drive. It won't run quite as fast, but it'll run fast enough to give you an idea of okay do I want to install this or not because from the CD everything is going to lag it won't give you a realistic of how this will run on your system so just a little test to sign I wouldn't recommend installing from that mode once you do that reboot the computer and go back to live CD and install that way so let's go into live CD And this is the beta. Uh, usually PC Linux has a much prettier screen. It goes through this and it has this nice little pretty screen that says loading in the bottom left hand corner. Press escape for verbose mode. Because this is a beta we're just starting in verbose mode. Now I'm going to go ahead and leave off here because this is going to take leave off here for this video. This can take, uh, it's like I don't know if y'all can see in the lower left hand corner, it says detecting hardware because of a sixth sense of humor from these people that says thinking. If you're a geek you have an appreciation for how absurd the concept of a computer thinking is. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it off there because that's going to take a little bit. Depending on the hardware you have, the performance of your system, for that to screen to fully load through, it can take anywhere from 15 seconds to a few minutes. It will be faster when it's running from your hard drive, but from the CD, you know, it also is going to depend on the read speed of your CD, speed you burn the disk, and a couple of those and other things. I will join you back after it's booted. Peace out, all.